right, now this is something that I did for Studio One version four, I believe, a long time ago. So I wanted to show you guys again. For uh, this could be for uh, you know taking it easy on your CPU, as well as if you're just a really good keyboard player, even a decent one, and can do your stuff in real time. And if you can't do your stuff in real time. I'll show you also how this can work for those that need to record a MIDI track first. What are we talking about here? We're talking about pulling up a VST instrument like Contact. I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to open up a bunch of instruments, and I'm going to record them to audio tracks directly. And at first, I'm not even going to use uh, a MIDI event. I'm just going to use the instrument track to trigger the MIDI and record it directly to an audio track. Then I'm going to show you how you can utilize the instrument track, uh, a MIDI event to actually do this. So let's see. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and open up contact. And this is the free version of contact. It's got some pretty decent instruments in it just for uh, by default. Let's see. What do I want to do first? I'm going to do the jazz organ first. Put this on here. Very cool. All right, cool. So now I'm going to bring in a bass, and it's going to put it on another instrument track, and I can minimize that. So there's the organ. Here's the bass. Just got to change the MIDI channel. Okay, perfect. And let's see what else am I going to do. I think I'll do an electric piano track as well. And I'm going to minimize the bass. And I'm going to change this to number three. Now I am going to do a drum track, but I'll do that last. And you have to do the drum tracks. You have to turn down the volume for the drum tracks if you're triggering it through MIDI. Uh, and you have other instruments loaded, at least on the free version. Don't know why it does that, but doesn't matter. So here is the uh, piano track. All right. So let's see. We have these three instruments. I'm just going to close them so you can see them all here. Just like that. Now I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to create an audio track, a stereo audio track. And I'm actually going to call this, we'll do the, um, do the piano first. E piano. There we go. So here's the first one. So now I want to be able to record on this audio track through uh, Studio One. So I don't want to record on the MIDI track right now. So I'm just going to monitor it. And I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to go to the inputs. And I'm going to go down here to instruments, and I'm going to select contact. And if I put this on record, we don't want to monitor it. There, oops, let's see if I turn that off. Is that off? Ah, who knows? Okay, so you can see that it's going to print an audio track, but there's not going to be a MIDI track. There. So let's see. Do I have my time signature right? I do. I have it on 3 4. I'm going to close contact. I'm going to turn on my click. Going to do 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Let's see if I can turn this up a little bit. All right. So let's see here. audio track to the click okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to MIDI channel 2 for the bass now I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to create another audio track I'm going to call this bass I'm going to go to my inputs I'm going to go to instruments and I'm going to have this one also coming from contact Turn that one off and turn this one on. All right, so let's see what I got here. One, two, three, one, two, three. All 
Beautiful. And now we should have that. Ooh, I got a wrong note in there, but that's fine. So now I am going to go back to contact. And let's see. The next thing we have is the organ. So now that's going to be on one. I'm going to shut that off. I am going to click on the plus sign, and I can actually, you know what, this time, I'm just going to right-click, and I'm going to choose duplicate. Not complete, but just duplicate. So now, there we go, that is going to record from that. All right, so let me see if I can do this. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. So now I'm going to actually turn these down a little bit. I'm going to give them a little bit of, let's see, I'm going to give them a little bit of a pan for this one and for the organ. I forgot to label the organ. There we go. Three, one, two, three. There we go. So now, last but not least, I'm going to do this with the drums. Only I'm going to do something a little bit different with the drums. I'm going to go ahead and go into contact. And I'm going to go here. Whoops, that's not what I want. There we go. And let's see. Pop kit. There we go. And that's going to be input number four. So if I go here and I go to four. Now. There we go. So now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to actually record an instrument track just so I can fix it if I need to. So let's see. Let's see. I don't know what this is going to sound like, but we'll see. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. So that was close. And it, it actually recorded the audio, but I'm going to mute that for right now because I know I got to fix the drums. Okay, so now I can double click on the drums. I can highlight in here, do a control all, and hit a Q. And now all of the drums are quantizing. I was really behind. So now I'm going to delete, just gonna right click, and I'm gonna say delete that event. Let's actually hear the drums. There was one kick. There we go. That's. Okay, so now that that's there, I'm going to take this off a of record. I'm only going to have the monitor, and I'm now going to record and transfer this to an audio track. Ready? So now where did my organ go? Oh, I did I have that? Oh, did you see what I did? <laughs> I forgot to create the drum track. I forgot to create the drum track. Did anybody notice that while I was doing it? So let's go control Z and let's go back to the organ track. Oh, yeah. See what I did there? There it is. <laughs> but see now, now I lost my drum track. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I'm going to do something here. So I should have these two. Okay, so let's see if this is still working. It is. So now, yeah, you see what I forgot to do? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate track just like this. So now this is going to record. All right, I'm going to do this one more time. Let's see what 
happens here. Oops, gotta go back. There we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. Now I'm gonna do this again here. This should be drums. There we go. I'm going to erase this. Now I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to do the control all and quantize. And now I'm going to turn off the recording here. I just want to monitor it now. I want to transfer that to the drum track. One, two, three. we go perfect so now once i have all of my tracks recorded and quantized or if i wanted to quantize i didn't quantize these three but now i can go here i can right click i can say remove track and instrument and now i'm going to be saving a whole bunch of cpu and with just one single instance of contact with a couple of instruments loaded up what did I do with this one? Oh, yeah, that's right. That one, I had that panned because I duplicated the track. There we go. <laughs> no, it sounds like a circus song. <laughs> there we go. And that's it. And I don't have to worry about using uh, contact anymore. Um, and so if you have some of these big VST instruments like Omnisphere, some of these things were pulling up just one instance of it really really taxes your cpu this is a great way to do it you can raise your device block size so that you don't use so much cpu power you can use uh the um audio dropout settings to actually take care of any latency during the performance and just with a single instance of any instrument that you might be using you can actually overdub all of these tracks. Now, of course, if you do it the way that I did with the drums, if you're not really that great of a keyboard player, you can create your tracks and transfer them. So the other thing that you can do too is you can actually uh, save all of the MIDI tracks if you ever have to go back to them and actually uh, keep them in a place to where if you have to redo any of these things, you can drag them back in very easily and then just remove the tracks afterwards. But this is a real... Excuse me, this is a really good way if you're going to print the tracks anyway and you're, you know almost exactly what you're going to record and having the ability to go back to the MIDI tracks at any time to redo certain things, you can save yourself a lot of grief and get all of the tracking done all at the same time as you're creating. So it makes a lot of sense to do something like this, especially if you have an older, slower machine. So very cool. All right, I hope that this helped and I will see you all in the next video. Become a member and support home studio trainer live streams and videos today. Click the join button at the bottom of every live stream or video. You'll find it right next to the subscribe button. There are three levels for every budget and they all have unique perks that go along with them. The $1.99 level is for dedicated members who will get continued access to all regular videos and live streams. You will also receive badges and emojis to show you how long you've been a member. The $4.99 level is for the awesome dedicated members. These members will get early access to upcoming videos and live streams as well as member-only content unavailable to non-members. And finally, the $9.99 level is for the super dedicated members. These members will have access to all of the other levels including free one-on-one -on -one Skype or Zoom training. Free help and support sessions will also be available as well as direct personal videos to answer any questions about home recording or Studio One specifically. A direct phone number option for quick calls or to set up a training and help session will be available upon request. Thank you so much for supporting Home Studio Trainer on YouTube.